Oh, this little guy looks like he's not feeling real good. He looking kind of droopy. Hey, what's up, lawn care nuts? So it's the weekend again, and it's really wet outside. Just my luck, because I still can't get the kind of work done that I need to get done, namely mowing the lawn. What I've come to realize is that lawn care and sailing have a lot in common. The weather window opens rarely when your schedule permits, and the weatherman always seems to be wrong. And other times you just find a random blue, large, oversized tennis ball in your yard. But that's okay, because it gives me an excuse to get something done that I've been putting off for a while. And that is splitting some hostas. So that's what today's video is all about. Splitting, transplanting, and actually putting hostas in the ground. All right, so here we are. And this is the hosta that we're gonna take out. You can see it's encroaching on this blue one here because I need to get three plants out of this. So I'm actually going to pull this entire hosta out and turn it into three and then move them up to the front. Now we're ready to take this hosta out of the ground. So all you're going to need here is a box or a bucket. I like to use a box. We're going to actually put the hosta in this because we don't want to lose any soil. Um, and it also makes it easier to carry because these things can be pretty heavy um, when you pull them out. So let's see a box or a bucket and then a spade shovel here. All right, and uh, definitely want the curves because it's gonna help you go right around the root ball. First step in the process is we're gonna go ahead and just clear the rocks out from underneath here. You know, you don't wanna waste those. These are expensive. I have pea gravel. It's what I've always used in my landscapes. It reminds me of the sand of the ocean, so that's why I like pea gravel. Again, you're just gonna use your hand for this. I mean, this is part of fun here is getting dirty. Okay, so we're cleared out. Now all we gotta do is literally just dig right around the rim. You wanna stay a couple inches out from the stalks that you can see and go right down in. It's inevitable you're gonna cut some roots. The thing you need to know about hostas is that they are super tough. These guys can handle almost anything. So cutting a few of their roots may cause a little momentary wilting during plant uh, transplant, a little transplant shock, but other than that, they're gonna be just fine. And so what you're going to notice when you start to get about three quarters of the way around, it almost comes out in this perfect pot. See that? That's because the root ball is so dense. And uh, I also happen to be in clay, so that's one of the advantages to clay soil is when you're transplanting, everything comes out in this nice pot shape. Okay, so I'm digging here, and actually um, this plant, it kind of grew a little bit weird. It didn't stay circular. It kind of crept, I think, because of the uh, landscape fabric that's here. It started creeping underneath and it couldn't get up in certain places and it could in others so it caused it to morph. So this hosta is actually not perfectly round, it's actually kind of long. So I've got a natural division that's already made itself apparent coming right out of the ground here. So don't panic if this comes up in a couple, you know, in a couple plants like this. It's okay, again, they're tough. I think this actually might work out to my favor. So there's how you split them when they're coming out of the ground if you have to. So let's go ahead though and let's take the other pieces up and let's split those with a shovel, but I'll show you how that looks when they're out um, on a flat space, which is ideally where you would wanna be so you can make sure you get everything the right same size. So now let's go over and look at where we're gonna move these guys to. We're gonna go pretty much somewhere like one, 
two, and three. All right, so I've got everything brought around now. Um, what you're gonna need now is a spade shovel, and same one you used before, and then you're also gonna need some dirt, some extra dirt. Tip here, I've got a lot of old potted plants that, you know, I've had potted plants around the house for 10 years, move these, change the pots, all kind of, I have a lot of empty pots that have a lot of really good soil in them. So whenever I can, I grab one of these old pots that's got soil in it, and I use that. It's just a nice way to recycle, if you will. Okay, so we've got our hosta here and I laid it on its side and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my eye and I'm going to watch where I think it's going to be even size wise and I'm going to take the spade and I'm going to put it right down the middle. Okay, so now we're split. It's been a successful operation. I've got, uh, started with one patient, now I've got three patients. So I've gotta get these guys in the ground. It's not like there's a big rush or anything, but I mean, I don't want them to hang out either. You definitely don't want the root ball to dry out. And so now what we gotta do is dig the hole for each one. There's all these people that'll tell you, well, let's dig the hole twice or three times bigger than the root ball. That's probably true with container plants and things you buy at a nursery, but these guys are just coming out of the ground. These are soft-bodied perennials. These don't need a lot of extra attention or anything. So just dig the hole big enough to fit them in it and then you put a little bit of dirt around them and call it a day. Okay, now for sure one thing you want to do is uh, make sure you rough up the edges of the hole you dig. Especially if you have clay soil like me. Because what will happen is if you leave the sides perfectly straight, it'll actually conform this what I call a clay pot. And what that means is as it gets hot, the ground will kind of cook and stay. The clay will stay in the shape of a pot. Water can get in here and pool up underneath the hosta and cause what's called wet feet. And that won't help them no matter how tough they are. So when you have clay soil, what you want to do is once you dig your hole here, you want to scar up the edges. Okay. Last thing, you want to leave the dirt in the bottom a little bit loose. We don't want to pack it. Same thing, you kind of scar up the bottom and leave some loose dirt in there like that. Just help with the drainage. This is, again, this is in clay soil. You got to be concerned about this mostly. And you can see I have definitely got clay soil. Pick this guy up, drop him straight in. There we go. Okay. And I do have some areas, I do have some areas around the edges, see, I even dug this a little too big, but it's kind of an oblong cut here, see. So I'm going to level it, and then I'm going to fill in around it. And you'll notice I saved all of the dirt in a box. Try not to throw it back in the landscape, throw it in a box, and then I can pull it back in. And again, I've got my backup in my pot if I need it. Now one thing, I'm not going to backfill this yet. Uh, this is another trick. If I backfill this, and then when I get to the end, I realize that I didn't space it right, or I had an issue, I'm going to end up having to dig them all up. So what I do is I get them in place, ready to go, leveled out, and I get all three that way. And then if I step back and everything looks good, then I backfill each one. That way if I have to move something, it's a lot easier. <laughs> 